fredag eftermiddag klockan 16.30 när det är soligt ute. Det känns jättekul. Vi är väldigt glada över att ni är här och väldigt glada över att ha många av er som, som aktieägare, vet jag, känner igen de flesta av er. Jag heter Rob Eriksson, jag är ansvarig för investerade relationer och, och mediekontakter i Sverige för flera bolagen inom Lundin-gruppen. Och idag så är vi här då för att lyssna på första presentationen av Shamaran Petroleum, som kanske blir lite kortare. Och sen en lite längre presentation av Africa Oil, jag tror att det här kommer ta en timme ungefär. Och sen kommer det finnas förtäring att tillgå här, här utanför. Det är två väldigt spännande bolag, så att utan att jag ordrar för mycket om det så skulle jag Giga lämnar över här till, till Shamarans ordförande och till lika Africa Oils vd. Men jag vill också, uh, I would like to mention that we also have, a, I have my colleague here, Alex Barnes, maybe Alex you could stand up. Uh, Alex är uh, Vice President External Relations for Africa Oil och han uh, finns tillgänglig för att prata mer om uh, vad vi gör när det gäller uh, Uh, community development, uh, CSR, uh, government relations och så vidare. Och det kommer även Kit beröra i, i sin presentation av Africa Oil. Så so, uh, without further ado, I would like to turn the microphone over to Mr. Kito. Alright, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, Robert. Well, uh, when Robert suggested we were going to come here on Friday afternoon, but, uh, I wasn't uh, sure we'd have more than about three or four people, so I'm very happy to see that. When I walked out today and saw the sunshine, I, was, I wasn't even sure if Robert was going to come. <laughs> um, thank you everybody for uh, taking time. I'm also pleased we've now got the youngest investor I've ever seen. Uh, that, uh, one of our, uh, and we also have Nisa Sandra. I wouldn't call him the oldest, but he's certainly the longest lasting uh, Lundy supporter uh, uh, in the group. So very good to see Nisa um, here tonight as well. So I'm going to start off talking about my second favorite oil company in the world, uh, which is Shamrock Petroleum. Um, I'll leave it to you to figure out who the first favorite company in the world is, but uh, uh, I think they're both similar type stories. So um, I'm the chairman of Shamrock. I'm going to give a fairly brief description of Shamrock, kind of updating you where we are and the way we see uh, the future and kind of where we are in the, uh, the recent wells. Um, then I'm going to spend a little bit longer time talking about Africa oil. Which, uh, of course, I know more about and uh, is, is, is uh, um, very topical at the moment. So Chamaron, we started uh, as, a, as a company called Bayou Bend, which some of you may have known. Uh, um, and we, we, we got into Kurdistan through it. And I think if you say, what are the things that make the Lundin successful around the world? It, it, we move very fast and we get in before the herd. So before Chamaron, before Kurdistan was really a, a, an interesting area around the world, um, we were there and we were looking at the prospects and, and, and we uh, uh, came in and got uh, the pick of the acreage. We got some of the earliest acreage uh, that was awarded in Kurdistan. And uh, I would say we've been successful and we've had some uh, challenges in Kurdistan. So uh, it is a lending group company. It's EMP focused. Um, we're only in Kurdistan. We only have one block now. We have the Atreus Steel. Uh, the market cap is about $325 million, 19.8% uh, controlled by the Lundin family. Um, and again, Atrush is our only asset in the country. It is a hard country to expand in. Uh, I think the, uh, most of the uh, um, uh, acreage now is being taken up by the big guys, the, uh, the Exxon, the Total, the Chevrons, the Repsols. Um, I think for guys our size, it's gonna be very difficult to expand within Kurdistan. But we have a very nice uh, um, ongoing development of tradable opportunity. So uh, a, a huge province, over 54, 45 billion barrels of oil and 200 CCF of gas resource potential in Kurdistan itself. That's not even counting Iraq proper. So it's, a, it's, 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 it's really one of the places to be. We are pushing now for, for uh, a truce to come on stream. We believe we'll, it will be on stream with us in 2015. Uh, with an early production system of about 30,000 barrels a day. Um, but we plan to ramp that up. We think that's only the beginning, uh, a phased production up to 120,000 barrels a day. So uh, obviously a very big oil field to, to be developed. Again, uh, Sarif and I have a little um, conflict as to what is the exploration capital of the world. Some might call East Africa, some might call Kurdistan. Uh, the bottom line is they're, they're both really good places to look for oil and gas. I think they probably are the top two places in the world uh, where you can find big oil fields uh, um, and, and 
did it on contract terms on CSA for the reasonable to uh, cost that time. So it is still a very big uh, uh, activity hub. All of the super majors have come in. Turkish companies are coming in. And that's one of the key messages I want to leave with you tonight in, uh, in Ramadan is that the relationship with Turkey and the building of the export pipeline to Turkey is one of the real drivers of the value in Ramadan. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, there still are challenges between KRG and Baghdad. Um, uh, they haven't resolved all of their issues yet. I think tacitly, the, uh, um, the central government has basically said if the Kurds want to go their way, let them go their way, and they seem to be doing so. Uh, but it would be nice if they could actually get this uh, on a formal basis because I think Kurdistan is, is moving forward and I think they will continue to move forward uh, with or without the government support. But I think certainly it would be easier if the, if the two sides uh, came to a, an agreement. Um, again, the Turkish development uh, is, is, a, is a very positive one that, that we see. They are now their major trading partner. They've signed an energy cooperation agreement. There is an oil pipeline that is nearing completion. We'll talk about um, where you're actually going to be getting exports from KRG direct to Turkey without going through the southern Iraq uh, system. Uh, and there's also plans for a big gas export pipeline to Turkey by 2016. I think it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Turkey obviously needs a, a good, reliable, cheap source of energy. Uh, their neighbors next door need an outlet for their hydrocarbons that doesn't go through the south. So the pipeline I'm talking about, uh, um, the, the main one is actually this Kermala to Kishkabar. So what this does for the first time, instead of having to go down through southern Iraq uh, with all crude and be uh, uh, using the pipeline system, they can actually now directly export into Turkey, and more importantly, get paid world price for their crude as they're exporting it to Turkey. So this one is, uh, I think, just about complete. The last I heard it was 300 meters left to, to build. So it should be hooked up and, and ready to go, uh, certainly uh, within the next uh, 30 to 60 days. So uh, initially, they'll have 300,000 barrels a day. Uh, the people that will be using it first are, are, are the, uh, the talk talk uh, folks that have tied into this pipeline, and of course some of the other users along the way. Our friends at Gulf Keystone are building a tie-in pipeline to that, and I think you'll see that uh, that capacity going up dramatically. They're, at, they're looking at getting up to one million barrels a day by 2015 by adding in additional pump stations. So this will be a, a, the major export pipeline run. There's other pipelines that are being considered. One is a gas pipeline. There's some huge gas fields, particularly in this part of the of the uh, country, which are basically stranded there, which uh, um, they're looking at building a gas pipeline along the same route as this pipeline to, to export gas to Turkey as well. Mm -hmm. And there's also some heavy crude uh, that they're looking at doing a pipeline project with heavy crude to Turkey as well. But this really unlocks the value of, of these oil fields. And I think you see when, when this oil starts flowing through the pipeline, when people get paid world prices by it, I think you'll see every stock in if it's uh, Kurdistan based go up dramatically uh, as that uh, becomes a reality. So let's talk a little bit about the field that we we did find. Uh, it is right kind of in the, in the nicest neighborhood. Shaikan is probably the best field that's been found in, in Kurdistan in the new round of exploration. It's a company called Gulf Keystone. It's also very near the DNR's Tauke field, and it's very near the uh, Tok Tok field uh, 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 that was found by uh, um, um, Adax originally and then sold to the, to the Chinese. So again, very good neighborhood. The main reservoir is a, what's called the Jurassic VSAM. I won't tell, go through all of that. We just call it the VSAM reservoir. It's four, four Jurassic uh, reservoirs that are back together and actually act as one reservoir. So we found that in two, April of 2011, and now we're really focused on getting it into production and, and moving it forward. We have done appraisal work on that. We drilled a tube two um, that extends the, the, the oil column down dip um, and also looked at some of the newer reservoirs, the Adaya and the Mutma formations. This was uh, one of the biggest single tests uh, in, in uh, not only in Kurdistan but in the world in the last decade. 42,000 barrels a day um, uh, um, from that well. So uh, again, made a, with these types of wells, we don't need too many wells to actually put together a early production system if you can get the uh, flow rates of, of that order. Um, we have made a commercial declaration in November of 2012. 
KRD did exercise their backing rights, and we have a field development plan submitted to the KRD in 2013. So, and then the last thing we've just done, and they announced it not long ago, would be a Troops 3 um, uh, um, appraisal well, which has confirmed a uh, significant extension to the east of the, of the field. So again, the uh, first oil pro progress, we're, we're really uh, focused on getting oil, getting production, getting cash flow. The, the beauty of this field is it will fund itself. If we get that first 30,000 barrels a day in, all future phases to get to 120,000 barrels a day come out of cash flow and our self-funding. So that's really our, 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 our focus now. So the, the, the field plan we did uh, submit um, does have three additional phases in it. And they're really kind of bolt-on things. We can actually just keep, take these field facilities and stack them next to each other. They're almost uh, somewhat off the shelf, but we can place them next to each other. And as we get capacity, just add more and more and more. So the field itself is quite big, 627 million barrels. Um, and that's uh, as of December 2012 uh, with the new um, with the new well, we may be able to uh, even extend that a little further and, and uh, uh, get uh, some resource growth as well. We have 20.1 interest percent interest in the PSP, and we still have some uh, Cretaceous and Triassic reservoirs that we haven't uh, evaluated yet. So the three wells we drilled, this is a, a cross section that shows the three wells. This was the original discovery well. Uh, you can see the, these are the main reservoirs, the BFAM. Um, we, we tested uh, about 6,000 barrels a day out of these, and we came down dip, tested these uh, uh, zones. What we found is the upper zone, it, it is all acting as one big container. The upper zone is lighter oil than the lower zone. The lower zone tends to be a little heavier, a little more viscous. Um, but we, we were able to, to uh, prove this down dip section. We were actually able to test some oil out of the zones that we didn't uh, test uh, in the first well. So we extended the field into those horizons as well. And then the last well we drilled, we stepped up quite a ways. We proved uh, the extension of the field. It was significantly down dip, uh, mostly in the heavier oil. So we didn't get the flow rates we had in the uh, lighter oil segment. But for us, that was very important to prove that uh, we have uh, uh, oil that far to the east and that far down dip. So the next well we're going to be drilling is a Troosh 4. A Troosh 4 is a crustal well that should see all of these reservoirs in the nice <coughs> light oil section. It should be a very uh, uh, interesting well and, and see some flow rates as good, if not better, than what we've seen uh, in uh, the, the previous well. So um, BSA, um, uh, the AP4, um, <laughs> we drilled uh, um, uh, later this year, early next year, and I think it's going to be a, a, a critical well for us. So again, aerially, this is the field uh, outline. Um, these are the wells drilled in the past. That, that's the uh, Atrush uh, 1, the Atrush 2, the Atrush 3. We're actually going to go back to the pad that we drilled Atrush 1 and do a, a deviated well off of that pad to, to drill the uh, crustal part of the field. So again, cutting Q3, Q4, 2013, um, a whole angle of 70 degrees. And I think that uh, um, we're, we're very hopeful that that's going to be uh, the best well that we've drilled to date. Um, and then we plan to use this as one of our producers. So in our early production plan, we'll save this well as a producer. We, the, the number one well is probably not uh, good for a producer. We, we've blown too many holes in the casing there. Uh, we probably need to abandon that. But we may be able to certainly use the number two well as well as a, a producer. So again, uh, had a significant reserve growth primarily after we drilled the uh, number two well. So um, from, from 2011 to 2012, you see we had uh, the, the one C or somewhat uh, proven case go up 46%, the two C case, uh, sort of equivalent to proven and probable, uh, up 35%, uh, and the mean up 21%. You can see the high case is still pushing a billion barrels of recoverable oil. So this is, this is a, this is a very good field, uh, one of the best fields uh, that, that's been found in the last uh, round of exploration in Iraq. We still up, have upside, the Cretaceous and the Triassic, so uh, uh, anywhere for over a couple hundred million to uh, up, up, up to as much as uh, uh, about 100 million up to a, a couple hundred million um, uh, on a high case. So again, there's not huge amounts of growth in new reservoirs we see, but uh, 
uh, it's all it's already a very big field, and I think we, we can see some upside there. And there are some other things in the blocks uh, that uh, do look uh, interesting as well. So again, from a development standpoint, uh, uh, what the field facilities we need to put in have to be able to, to process the crude and take the water out. Uh, we do have uh, uh, H2S gas, so we need that leaning unit to sweeten, take the H2S out of the gas. And we will use that gas to generate power not only for ourselves, but possibly for neighboring communities if there's enough of it. Uh, we do have sulfur in the crude, so we need to look at uh, uh, future for future of sulfur recovery uh, that H2S, uh, uh, as, as can be seen in some of the other fields around the world, we will have to figure out what to do with that. It, it is possibly a, a valuable commodity unto itself. Uh, we will be building an oil terminal storage facility, so uh, near the product production facility we'll be growing, putting tank farms in, but we will be trucking early on. As we start gaining and getting more production, and as hopefully our friends at Gulf Keystone finish their Shaitan pipeline, the idea is we'd like to tie into that export pipeline, <coughs> certainly before we move up to the next uh, uh, 30,000 barrel a day phase, we, we'll need to put that in by pipeline. But we can move 30,000 barrels a day. There are companies there that are doing over 40,000 barrels a day by trucking. So it, it is a, a, a reasonable thing in the short term. This just shows kind of the area and uh, as I think we talked about before, you know, this is the, the, the field. Um, Kurdistan is about as easy as it gets. You just go look for a big ridge up on, up, up on the outcrop and just put your rig on there and, and there's oil down below. So the only real question is, is there a good reservoir? And uh, uh, in this part of the country, there is. You know, some of you have stuck with us through Polkana. We found the reservoirs down in the south were a little more challenging, but up here, it seems like we have very good quality reservoirs. So we will develop the central portion of the block first, basically around here. Then the second phase will be looking over at the east, and we'll be putting a terminal here that originally will be <coughs> taking uh, trucks and moving the oil by truck. But uh, uh, and as soon as we can, basically get a pipeline tied in and move it all by pipeline. So uh, the strategy is really just focus on the Atrush field, get phase one development of the Atrush of the Atrush field uh, underway. You've probably seen in the press, we, we're looking at financing alternatives, but the, our primary alternative is a bond. And, and I think we're fairly down, far down the road on putting a bond in place to uh, basically put, put, uh, fund phase one development of the Atrush field. Um, and after that, it becomes self-funding through the Atrush phases two to four. Uh, we will drill some wells to try to de delineate some of that upside potential, not only in the Atrush, um, uh, but also possibly in some other structures, substrate structures, and extensions of some of the other fields onto our block. So we have a new uh, operator, a company called Taka, very uh, experienced uh, developer out of the Middle East um, with very deep pockets. So they they bought out a, a company called Aspect. Um, we ended up actually owning GDC. So uh, happy to have them in. I think they're going to be a positive in, in, uh, influence. Um, so now our, our the KRT backed in, so they're 25%. So this will be the final um, uh, interest holding. So I think a, a good partner group, we have Marathon, the US company, Taka, and, uh, and ourselves as the primary uh, holders of the interest. So really, to, to sum up, you know, it is a world-class discovery. It's one of the biggest oil fields found in, in, the, in the last decade. Uh, it is a commercial, we've declared commerciality, and we're putting in appraisal development plan. I think we've got a good group of people you know, with Taka as an op as our operator, and uh, we expect to see production out of this in 2015. Uh, Self-funded with cash flow, so once we once we get that done, uh, we get to that 120,000 barrel a day without having to raise any more debt or equity. I think this is probably the biggest thing to keep in mind. I think once we get that export route, once people start getting paid full dollars for their uh, 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 crude, I think this is all of the Kurdistan stories be much better. And I think the, uh, you know, people ask what the long-term plan of this company is. I think we want to get it on development. I think we want to get that, that 30,000 barrels a day going. Um, and I think with the, the politics, certainly the export pipeline, but hopefully a, also a, a agreement between the Baghdad government and the Erbil government, I think these assets are going to be worth a lot more than they are today. So our plan now is basically to stick in for this 30,000 barrel a day production um, uh, while the politics improve. 
beyond that, I think uh, you know there may be limited utility to spending in Keylong just as a uh, as a single focus company in service sharing. But we are looking at other opportunities around the world. Um, there are some Middle East companies that look interesting to us. So we may, once we have the production cash flow funded, uh, we may be able to attract other companies to merge with us and, and grow a little bigger Middle Eastern company uh, in the country. All right, so do we want to stop and have a little Q&A on Shamaran first, or shall I just press on to uh, Patrick Boyle? I think we should take a few questions on Shamaran. All right, questions on Shamaran? I just want to know that it's going to be on the mainland, so it's just going to the same time. And so yesterday they came with an announcement that they're investigating uh, the connection to the Hatsik. Uh, what would be the trigger for the investigation process in the contract? Yeah, there's no real provision under the PSA for the investigation. Um, and I, I don't think right now that that's going to progress very quickly. I mean, uh, generally you have to prove that it's one field, that there's a there's a uh, extension of the uh, ICANN field into our block. So geologically, I don't think anybody's proven that yet. If it is proved that the, the, the ICANN field extends into our block, unitization is probably going to be in our favor because we basically can claim a certain portion of that field. And uh, the way unitization works is we actually get a percentage of the whole field revenue. So with ICANN being very Focusing on production, I think that's probably a positive thing if, uh, if we're able to determine that that ICANN field extends onto our block. So, uh, frankly, the only way to do that is to drill a well, um, uh, either very close to our block or on our block, um, before you can prove that that, that field is, is the same field that extends across the block. So I wouldn't expect to see that very soon. Nothing else? Let's see if I. Oh, sorry. Regarding the funding, Yeah, I think they're looking about a hundred million dollars uh, to, to pay for our share of the uh, development. So I believe, I mean, again, I'm not that close to this uh, produce and the guys in Purdue are running it, but my understanding is that it's about a hundred million dollar uh, bond that's being uh, uh, pursued right now. When do you expect the terms to be finalized and then publicly? Hopefully very soon. I think, uh, I think they're, uh, they're getting uh, fairly close on it, so that's my understanding. Yeah. Uh, you are using only one rig in the update. Is any plans to increase the amount of rigs, like our own neighborhood? Yeah, I don't think you need to right now. I mean, we're going to drill that one more appraisal well, but then we'll understand the field quite a bit. There's no real utility in drilling a bunch of wells ahead of time until we kind of have the production facility in there. So we will, we will time it out so that basically we've got enough wells ready at the time that the production facility uh, is, is completed. So um, once once we have a better timing on when, when that is, you'll see us uh, accelerating the drilling and potentially if we need to, we can drill in, we can bring in more than one rig. Yep. The field development plan, do you know when uh, we should expect the offer on that one? Yeah, it's been submitted to the government. I know there's ongoing discussions, so uh, um, it's, it's, it's it's hard to, to put an exact date on that. I don't think there's any big outstanding issues, uh, uh, but I think there are a few things that need to be worked through. So uh, I don't think I can really give you a, a reliable estimate of that. The first phase of it is already submitted. Submitted, yeah, yeah. but not approved by the government yet. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing else? 